best known for its use in France during the French Revolution and the Terror. The guillotine was a brutal mechanism and execution machine that was used for efficiently carrying out as many executions as possible. It was a structure that took the head off the French king, but it was even used during the Second World War in Nazi Germany, with Hitler's executioners taking the heads off those he deemed to be a traitor. The guillotine was created with the mindfulness of making capital punishment as reliable and as painless as possible, and within seconds someone could be killed. It would take mere seconds from the prisoner being passed to the executioner before they were confirmed dead. But what was the story behind the infamous structure, and is it true that someone could be alive once the blade fell? Remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Beheading machines had long been used before the French Revolution. One medieval scaffold named the Halifax gibbet was even used within England, with an axe blade placed on a dropping structure that would take heads. This was used as early as 1280, but after the execution of King Charles I, Oliver Cromwell the Lord Protector outlawed the use of the gibbet. The maiden was also used in Scotland for executions during the 1500s and was a form of guillotine too, but it was during the French Revolution that it was used heavily. Following its invention, it was actually called a Louisette, but was named then after a French physician, Joseph Inache Guillotin, who gave the idea of performing executions in France in a more humane way. Guillotin himself was against a death penalty, and he did not like the use of the breaking wheel and other barbaric ways of execution, and he convinced King Louis XVI to implement a more humane way. It wasn't Guillotin who made the first structure, as it was Antoine Louis and a German engineer Tobias Schmidt who built a guillotine prototype. But it was claimed that the king himself, Louis XVI, suggested using a straight angled blade. Ironically, it would be this structure that would then take his life later. Guillotin took to the National Assembly in October 1789, saying that capital punishment should be always done by decapitation in a simple and mechanic way, and then the king banned using the breaking wheel. But within his country, there was a growing discontent and uproar against the monarchy, with huge economic problems across France. A committee was formed of French officials, including Antoine Louis and Guillotin, who looked at other European countries to create a more humane device and beheading structure. It was said that the weapon should be used to take the heads of all condemned people, regardless of who they were and what standing they were in society, and that the purpose was to just end life and not cause pain. The prototype that was made looked how we would imagine a guillotine to look like, and the first execution by guillotine occurred with highwayman Nicolas Jacques Pelletier on the 25th of April 1792 being beheaded. This took place in front of the now City Hall of Paris, and it was here where all the condemned citizens were to die until the scaffold was later moved. The guillotine, it was said, was seen as a successful device, and it was considered much more humane. Before, executioners often using swords or axes took many swings to kill the condemned, leading to bloody scenes with people being hacked to death. The family of the condemned even paid executioners more money to make sure they had sharpened his sword or axe sufficiently to take the head off the person in one swift blow. Hanging was also seen as contentious, as it often took people minutes to die, but those calling for revolution did also like to use more barbaric methods, such as burning at the stake. But by using the guillotine and standardising one method of civil execution, it represented equality between all of the citizens of France, which encapsulated the morals of the French Revolution. It was a device that took off the head of the King of France and those of any class. If it was good enough for the King and his Queen, it was seen as good enough for the rest of France. During the Reign of Terror, the guillotine saw heavy use. This took place following the first declaration of the Republic, and a number of public executions took place, in which anyone who opposed the revolution was killed. Between June 1793 and July 1794, around 17,000 were beheaded on the device, including the King and the Queen. Even the leaders of the revolution, such as Maximilien Robespierre, were executed on the guillotine, and most of the executions were carried out at the Place de la Revolution in Paris. The guillotine was found in the corner of the square, and at times it was a form of public entertainment. Large crowds would gather to witness executions at this site, and people even made money from this. 
entrepreneurs would sell programmes containing the names of those to be killed, but to the French people, the guillotine was more than just an execution device. For them it was a symbol of the revolution, inequality in death, inequality in the eyes of the law. Following the French Revolution, the guillotine was moved and repairs were made to parts of the structure. In the 1900s it was still being used, and the last public guillotine in France occurred on the 17th of June 1939. Eugène Weidmann, a man convicted of murdering six people, was beheaded at Versailles outside a prison. But at the time it was noted that there was poor behaviour by spectators, and also people began to film and photograph the executions from above, and because of this, the French authorities banned public executions, saying guillotines must be used in private courtyards in prisons. Shockingly, it was still the official method of execution in France until the abolition of the death penalty in 1981, and the final three guillotinings took place in 1976 and 1977, carrying out its final beheadings of murderers. But the guillotine was used around the world in many other countries. Many European countries saw the guillotine and also had them built to take the lives of criminals in their lands. It was within Nazi Germany that the device was used heavily to take the heads of those people whom Hitler deemed to have been traitors to his Third Reich. The guillotine was used inside of Nazi Germany following Hitler's seizure of power to 1945 and it's estimated that around 16,500 prisoners were executed using the device. In fact, in 1944 to 1945, as the Second World War turned against the Germans and Hitler's grip on the war loosened, it's estimated that 10,000 people were killed on the guillotine alone within the space of around a year. Famously, Hans and Sophie Scholl, members of the White Rose resistance movement, were executed on the device, and Sophie, it was said, was the bravest person to go to her death on it. After the end of the Second World War, the guillotine was last used in West Germany in 1949, and in East Germany it was used until 1966 by the Stasi, who performed executions using it in secret. But ever since the guillotine was used, there has been controversy as to how humane the device actually is, and how painless death is for those found under the blade. It was certainly seen as entertainment for crowds, which itself is humane, but there have been accounts of those who have been beheaded, showing signs of life for moments after decapitation. There has never been any true scientific evidence on this, but there were accounts of the condemned's eyes stirring and fixating on the crowd once their head had been cut off. There are accounts of blinkings of the eyes and of eyelids lifting and even lips moving. But whether this was just told as a way of making execution seem more exciting for those telling the stories is disputed. But the guillotine took the heads of thousands of people in Europe since its creation. It was used by many different countries and not just the French or the Germans, and it's up to you whether you deem it to have been the most humane way of execution. In opposition to this, the fact that it is not used today probably disputes that this isn't the case, but for many around the world, it's seen as a symbol of the French Revolution, and of the values of liberty, equality and fraternity that encompass the revolution. But for others, it's seen as an instrument of Hitler's regime that was used to quash any resistance to him. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.